Hello sir. How are you today? Kind of bummed out, to be honest. What's the problem? Do you need someone to talk to? I just keep getting myself in trouble. If I am not busted for one thing, I am busted for another. I want to stop doing bad things, but I just can't help myself sometimes. You are right. Huh? You can't help yourself. Let me explain. The Bible tells us that we do bad things because it is the nature of the flesh to do bad things. Our flesh is weak and gives in to sin. Wait. Are you some kind of preacher or something? I am the pastor of First Baptist Church over on Ridgeway Road. My name is Bob Lowry. And your name? Gary. Gary Bosch. Nice to meet you, Gary. Tell me Gary, if I told you that you could have a way to stop doing bad things, would you be interested? Of course. I mean, every time I mess up, I have either my family or the law hating on me. Well Gary, you've admitted that you are a sinner. That's the first step. When did I say I was a sinner? Well, when you said you do bad things that was admitting you are a sinner. That is what sin is. Sin is doing bad things. Okay. I am a sinner. Does that make you better than me? No Gary, it does not. The Bible tells us in Romans 3.23. For all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. This means I am guilty of sin, you are guilty of sin. Everyone is guilty of sin. Now, the Bible goes on to tell us the penalty for sin. In Romans 6.23, we read, For the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sounds like none of us have a chance. Sin separates us from God, but God was not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. God demanded payment for sin. Each one of us are worthy of hell. Yet, God in his great love sent his son Jesus to die on a cross, shedding his blood so that our sins could be forgiven and that we could have eternal life with him in heaven. Romans 5 8 says, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. How do we get this eternal life? The only way to receive eternal life is to trust in God's Son Jesus Christ. A jailer once asked two men, Paul and Silas, this question, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. It's that simple? Just believe on Jesus? Yes, it is just that simple. Believe on him, and he will remove the curse that is upon you. He will plant in your heart his Holy Spirit and the Spirit will show you the right things to do and will give you strength in times of temptation or trouble. And that's it? Yes. That's it. Romans 10, verses 8 through 10 states, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart. That is, the word of faith, which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And the curse will be lifted? No strings attached. Just believe in Jesus and allow the Holy Spirit to teach me the right way to go? No cost to me other than following and listening to the Holy Spirit? Well, there are a couple other things I should mention. What's that? Well, once you trust Jesus, you need to get yourself planted in a good Bible-believing church where you will have fellowship with other believers and will be able to grow in your Christian walk. I can do that. What else? Well, Jesus demands that his followers give him 10% of their weekly or bi-weekly paychecks. This is called tithing. The Bible says the tithe is the Lord's and that it is to be brought to the storehouse or one is robbing God and under a curse. Wait. I am supposed to get saved to avoid a curse? But in order not to be cursed again, I have to give up 10% of my income for life? Man, what kind of God are you pushing on me? Why even get out from under a curse only to be put back under another curse? You said this man named Paul and another named Silas were told to believe on the Lord and they would be saved. Tell me, does your Bible say that the jailer had to give them 10% of his monetary income or he would be cursed? I don't mind giving to help others. Do not get me wrong. But I hate others twisting my arm for my hard-earned money. What if I have bills right now that I have to pay off? What if I can't afford 10% of my check? Never mind. 
I ain't interested in any god that will curse me if I can't pay him 10% of my money. That god sounds too much like an extortioner to me. Wait. You don't understand. The money is needed so that the gospel can be given to others. Don't you want others to know about a god that loves them enough to send his son to die for them? I see. The money is needed so you can tell others about this Jesus you serve and want me to serve. Tell me, how much did you have to pay in order to be given permission to talk to me today? I ain't interested in no god that will not let me tell others about him unless I give him 10% of my money each week. I've heard enough. I ain't going to join this cult of yours.